G'day, Reese Dowden here, and welcome to episode 31 of the Selection Bullet Points podcast. All right, the first one for 2022. And I hope everyone had a happy New Year, good Christmas, all that kind of stuff, good break, and you're ready to uh, get into this year, and, and especially for those planning on doing selection, all right, whether that's for SAS uh, or commandos or any of the police tactical groups. All right, so um, going to be a big year for a lot of people in regards to preparing for selection, and I'm here to help as well. Make sure you check out operatoredge.com um, for uh, what I what I can offer you in regards to helping you prepare for selection. But let's get into today's episode and the first one for the year. Um, it's a number of questions that I've um, that I've I've had over the last or over the Christmas break. Uh, this is the first podcast since I think uh, early um, December. All right, so a number of questions that I've had, um, sort of random uh, various co- topics in relation to selection and special operations. So let's go through a, f- uh, a bunch of them now. First one being aptitude tests uh, and some tips for the aptitude tests. Pretty interesting one. Uh, the main thing is you just got to practice, right? Practice a lot of the ap- aptitude tests. You really want to get your mind into that way of thinking, all right? If I if I try to do a random aptitude test now, uh, I probably wouldn't do that great. Uh, I probably wouldn't answer as many questions as I could as if uh, you know if I had actually practiced beforehand. Um, you know, because you don't do a lot. You don't you know day to day stuff. You don't you know solve a lot of those problems, and and you're not really you don't really have your head in the game um, in regards to aptitude due tests um, just you know in your normal day-to-day life so if you don't practice it you're really really setting yourself up for failure all right so the the adf have got a an app they call the adf aptitude test 2022 so go get it uh, there's a lot a lot of free ones you can get out there um, there's a company called defense ready that specifically helps people in regards to getting through the aptitude test and the interview process but really you probably should be able to do it yourself, all right? And I remember when I went for it in the Army, I don't think I practiced when I originally joined the Army. I didn't practice too much. And um, it was something around the, in the 80s, I think I got in regards to passing. I remember when I went for, got out of the Army the first time, went for uh, or I applied for the Air Marshals. And I wanted to do really well in the aptitude test. And I practiced a lot of them, um, some online, but bought a lot of books um, and really got my head around the game and, and answering those Sort of different questions um, on problem solving, mathematical questions, um, you know, the questions on pack, pattern recognition, so forth. And I scored about 90, 90 or 91 percent. All right, and I don't think I'm that smart. It's just because I practiced it. So you got to practice it. Uh, if you try and apply and you don't, uh, you don't pass it. Uh, you can't come back for six months. All right. And if you want to go SF, you want to pass, you know, quite high. If you can unlock the SF role, you can pretty much do anything else in the military. All right. So pass it. Try and pass it first go, and it lasts for about three years. All right. Next question I had uh, was from a young fellow. His parents want him to go uh, and become an officer in the army, but but he he doesn't, and he wants to know how how he can convince them otherwise. Well. What I would say to that is that, you know, you have to make your own decisions, all right? You're probably living at home now, uh, but you're the one traveling down that pathway, all right? And um, if you do something just because your parents want to, you might regret it, um, and that's going to be all on you because you're the one having to go down that route. So you're going to be an adult soon, all right? You've got to take responsibility and do what, what you think is best for you. Uh, so I would explain to your parents why you want to why you want to do it, pros and cons of, of going the way you want to do, and, and ask them why they want you to become an officer. All right, and, and what what they have an issue with um, you going down the the soldier route. Okay, and, and just sort of allay their fears there, um, and and really put it towards them why you want to do it, um, and the exact reasons. One point you could bring up though is that if you join as as a soldier. All right, you can then later on apply and become an officer. All right, but you can't do it the other way around. Okay, you can't join as an officer and then 
um, say that you've had enough being an officer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you're qualified, that is. If you go the officer route, you become a qualified officer. You can't then go, oh, I'm gonna hand in my rank and become a digger, all right? And I've known officers that have wanted to do that, um, because probably, uh, in SF in particular, it's probably more fun, <laughs> all right, as a digger, in regards to actually doing a job and, and kicking indoors for the whole career. Um, but yeah, you can't, you can't go from an officer and come back to a digger, right? But you can do it the other way around. So if you had to say that to your parents, say, look, this is what I want to do, why I want to do it. Um, become a soldier first and then, you know, learn the ropes there, learn the army, understand how that works, understand how soldiers think, um, and what their issues are. And then become an officer and you're going to be a better officer that way anyway. So that's one way you could go, right? And I firmly believe that if you become a digger first, go through a soldier pathway, you'll be a better officer. Next question, I had, I'm a long way out from selection. What should I be doing now? Main thing, firstly, is make fitness a habit, all right? Particularly your body weight exercises, swimming, um, get into some pack marching, but be careful about pack marching. You don't want to go overboard too hard too early uh, and get injured. So just start light, start slow, and you can build up. Really just get conditioned for pack marching before you head to Kapuka. Um, but running in particular uh, and, and running endurance, um, all the endurance activities really, because that's what that's what selection is, right? It's about endurance, um, and you want to build that base of endurance a long way out from selection. Other things you could do is develop good stress management strategies, such as uh, you know practice different breathing routines, understand which ones work for you, different self talk methods, visualization, that kind of stuff, uh, and really test them out. I you know, go through some cold therapy um, and, and test your, your breathing exercises there. Uh, if you're going to do any cold therapy training like ice baths and all that kind of stuff, make sure you have somebody there to watch you, right, because there's been instances where people have passed out and died from that, okay? So be smart about it. But you want to test all these different stress management strategies, all right? So as though you can read as many books as you want and you can understand all the stress management strategies in the world, but if you don't practice it, how are you going to know if it works on the day, all right? So get out and practice it. Uh, put yourself in stressful positions or in stressful situations and see what works for you. So, um, one of those, is, one of the great ones is competitions. All right, especially if you do any kind of um, competitive sports, test it in competition. All right, so jiu-jitsu um, competitions, for example, are a, great, are a really great one. All right, because um, you're the only one out there on the mat. All right, apart from your, um, uh, apart from the guy that you're rolling against or competing against. So. Understand stress management strategies, develop some for yourself, and get out and test them. The other last one would be to find out your weaknesses now and start improving on them. All right. So, what do you suck at? What are you bad at? If you're a long way out from selection, there's no excuse to go into selection with a weakness. All right. If you're ordinary at running, or you can't swim, or you swim poorly, or you can't do pull ups, all right, identify that now and work to improve it because it may take you a long time. Right, I always get those questions. I always get asked from dudes, "Oh, I suck at this or I suck at that." You know, I can't do any pull-ups, and my response is, "How often do you do pull-ups?" Oh, not often. Right? How long have you known that you suck at pull-ups? Oh, fairly long time. Right? So, identify it, work on it right now, and then you're going to be ready. Okay, you're not going to go into selection um, worried or or um, more nervous or anxious that you should be knowing that you've got a weakness in a certain area. No real excuse for that, okay? You don't have to be a jet in all areas, but you don't want to be um, so weak in areas that, you know, you're going to fail it. Next question is, should I do a sniper course in the regular army if I want to do it in SF? Absolutely, all right? Doing something like the sniper course or recon course, you know, that's really going to help you help you hone your soldier skills uh, ready for selection and Rio. And, and, and those courses are tough in, in the uh, regular army, you know, especially the um, recon course. You're going to be doing hard PT. You're going to be, you know, it's a somewhat of a selection course. You're going to be being assessed constantly and there's a high failure rate, all right? So definitely put your name down for that and do it. Just be aware that if you are qualified as a snipe in the regular army and once you get to SF, if you want to become uh, you know, do the job, be a sniper in SF, you're going to have to have to do the SF sniper course, which is a little bit more comprehensive. However, if you've passed the one in the regular army, you, sh- you should have no dramas. And most of the guys that I know that were snipers in the regular army and did it in SF, did the sniper course in SF, they passed. Blister management, best tips. It's an interesting run. 
Um, a lot of one, a lot of people have trouble with blisters, and and there's different. You know, these are purely just my opinions, um, and what worked for me, uh, you might find out a different way um, that works for you, and that's fine. You just want to try many different ways. So, firstly, you want to find the best uh, boot, the best fitting boot for your foot. You know, I always get asked all the time, what are the best boots? I can't really comment on that because I don't wear all the, I haven't tried all the new um, approved army issue boots. Um, or approved uh, boots that you can then buy yourself. So they're all slightly different. It's like running shoes. You know, they're all made slightly different for, and people, you know, people with different feet, different type of feet are going to fit different boots better. So you just really have to try them. Uh, you could try different pairs of socks. So a plethora of different socks out there now, different materials. Uh, you got ones with a sock liner in them as well. I've tried those. They're not too bad. So plenty of different ones. All right. Uh, that you can try. Um, but probably, the main thing I'd, I just wore, I just wore the, the green woolen socks, the green woolen socks. That was it, one pair, um, and I just taped my feet. That was it. So I just worked out where the hot spots were on my feet, and I taped them. When you tape your feet, though, you don't want to use a lot of tape. I right? just use one or two bits of strip, generally just one strip, uh, maybe on the ball of your foot or between your toes or the end of your toes maybe or around your heel. All right. So find out where that is. One bit of tape, maybe two, and you're good to go. Too much tape and it's going to rub even, even more, okay? So tape your feet. I always get asked a question about Condi's crystals. Uh, I never did that. Um, and honestly, most people I know, you don't really see it a lot, people using Condi's crystals. That's in my um, experience anyway. You'd always get one or two people uh, on selection that would have the you know purple-colored feet, which is um, as a result of... Uh, dipping them or soaking them in Condi's crystals. But most of the guys I know, most of my mates have asked them all, no one, no one used it, uh, but there's always a couple that did, and there's probably people that swear by it, all right? Anything you do in regards to taping your, your feet, anything you do in regards to selection, preparing for selection, you need to test it a long way out from selection. Test it a long way out, understand what works for you, and then you've got a good plan, and you can keep with it, as you go, move into your training program, sort of six months out for selection, your specific training program for selection, okay? You'll have all that stuff sorted before then, okay? So there's no last-minute sort of testing. Next question. I wanted some advice on leaving and returning to an organization. Uh, this fellow left the police force as a special constable uh, to j journey into the unknown, and he was considering returning to the job. How can he make this decision in a way that isn't fear-based? See, the only reason I would do what I, what I would say to that is the only reason I would go back to a job that I left, which is actually exactly what I did. All right, I was in the army for about four and a half years in the regular army. Tried out for selection for Perth, didn't make it, got out straight away. All right, and then I got out. I was out for about four years before I, before I wanted to go back. The only reason I would go back, uh, or the only reason I went back, is because I wanted it was unfinished business. Trying out, wanting to go SF, and I was wanting to go. To something better than I that I did a better job, better job role that I was already in. There's no way I would have gone back and joined the regular army again. Me personally, I just wouldn't have done it, right? Because I'm going back into the same job, all right. So the only reason I would personally go back and do a job that I'd left previously if it was something better than I was doing, okay. Otherwise, you're just going back to the same old job and you already left that role for certain reasons, okay? Because you weren't interested, you didn't like it. So if you're going to go back, make sure you go back to something better. Or something different. Last one I had is on pack marching. All right, what are the rules? Question I had for one of the boys in my program. What are the rules on shuffling? Uh, he's uh, watched on YouTube videos that's not allowed, and then on others that it is. And also, what is considered shuffling and not jogging? All right, so that that was for a couple of years. They um, they had that rule in the 90 minute pack march that you couldn't shuffle which is a fucking ridiculous rule because um, you know if you're a shorter person you've got shorter legs you have to shuffle to keep up all right you have to shuffle to make the time and get your best time if you're six foot four six foot five you probably don't have to shuffle you can stride out and you're going to do a good time so that was a fucking ridiculous rule they've scrapped that now okay so on the 90-minute pack march that you do on the entry test, on the 20 clicker, you can shuffle you want. You can run the whole fucking thing, all right? Uh, some people almost do. 
Oh, you have to be a weapon at back marching to do that. Uh, so you can definitely shuffle, and it's not jogging, okay? It's a little shuffle. Your feet are barely coming off the ground. Um, you, can, you can hear when people shuffle because they, they strike, sort of scrape their heel on the dirt. They're keeping their feet that uh, close to the ground. All right, so definitely had to shuffle. Uh, and you want to you come up with some strategies or test, test the different walk shuffle strategies for you, okay? Because if you just... If you haven't really got a strategy and you shuffle too often for too long, you're really going to burn out, all right? You're going to get lactic overload and you're just going to die in the ass, all right? So this will come along with training, making sure you prepare well, making sure you start slow with pack marching and building up. But you could try the different walk shuffle strategies and some of the bikes in my program, they might do something like 200 paces walk, uh, 200 paces shuffle or 200 paces walk, 100 paces shuffle, whatever the case may be. Or right, you might be do it by time as well. Say you walk for two minutes and, and shuffle for 30 seconds, something like that. I probably wouldn't do it half and half. My ratio would be something like um, four to one maybe, all right? So if you're doing four minutes walk, one minute shuffle, something like that. Um, I think that's the way I used to do it. I, I might have done like a few four-minute walk and a, and a minute shuffle, something like that. I can't quite remember, but it definitely wasn't. The ratio was about four to one, as I can recall, and that was fine, plenty of time, um, passed no problem, okay? So, you, again, you got to test and find out what works for you. Uh, you might find that you can do a two-to-one walk-shuffle ratio. Again, find out what works for you and go with that and practice it a long way out. All right. Main thing is that it is a shuffle, right? It's not a hard run. All right. You're not trying to do five minute kilometers when you're shuffling. All right. So it's just, um, it's just to keep the speed up, save a bit of time. It's also to loosen up your hips a little bit, right? And as I said earlier, you go too hard, uh, for too long in the run, in the shuffle, and you're going to burn out. You're going to die on the ass and you'll probably fail. All right. Last thing is make sure you do on the day what you do in training. Okay. I've seen it so many times that people, maybe on the day they're talking to other guys beforehand and they think, oh, that's a good idea, I haven't tried that before, and they try it on the 20 clicker. Or they try some uh, new supplements, you know, the day before or the day of or during the actual 20 clicker uh, and their body doesn't like it. So in any of these, if any of you guys are listening, girls are listening, um, and you have done any kind of endurance events, you know this, all right? You need to practice um, in training what you're going to do on the day and then when the day comes actually fucking do that don't change it up all right because you will um, your body might not respond the way you want uh, and you're going to die in the ass so what you do in training you know it works um, and do it a long way out and then make sure you do it on the day all right and that's it for this podcast first one of 2022 if you've got any questions um, if you're watching the video just post it below obviously on youtube uh, otherwise, you can send me an email, reese at operatoredge.com, or you can go to my Instagram account, reese underscore doubted, send me a message, uh, ask me any questions that you have, any questions that you want uh, me to answer on future podcasts, and I will do so. And then also, one final thing, make sure you check out operatoredge.com, and you can also go to operatoredge.com slash selection, number of different resources there in regards to what I do to help you out in regards to preparing for selection. All right, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed the podcast and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.